It was considered one of the world's great museums and a symbol of Turkey's shared heritage, open to all. But on Friday, the Hagia Sophia became a mosque once again. Hani güzel bir mesaj. Türk'ün gücünü gösteriyor, Müslümanlığın gücünü, kuvvetini, birliğini. Burası bizimdi zaten. Üzerimizdeki beddua kalktı. Haftaya heyecanla bekliyoruz namaz kılmayı. The Hagia Sophia is the architectural centerpiece of Istanbul and the embodiment of its rich history. Built by Byzantine Emperor Justinian in 537 AD, it became a mosque in 1453 when Ottoman Sultan Mehmet II conquered the city. And then in 1934, another change. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk ended worship at Hagia Sophia, part of a push to make the country more secular and modern. Kemal Ataturk set out to change a backward oriental despotism into a modern republic. Since Ataturk, most Turkish leaders have tried to keep religion out of politics. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has made a point of doing the opposite. Ayasofya'nın hangi amaçla kullanılacağı konusu Türkiye'nin egemenlik haklarıyla ilgilidir. Erdogan is a populist, a nationalist, and an unapologetic supporter of political Islam. He's become a champion to conservative Muslims who felt alienated by policies that seemed to turn away from the country's past. Ayasofya is a symbol. Yunus Genç heads an Islamic group that advocated for the rededication. Bize emanet olarak bıraktığı ve kıyamete kadar cami olarak kalması için vakfettiği bir yapının cami olmasının Erdoğan though has more immediate problems to deal with. For Erdoğan of course I think what matters is uh, political survival. Political scientist Sonar Çaptay is director of the Turkish research program at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. He delivered quite phenomenal economic growth for about 15 years after coming to power in 2003. He lifted many people out of poverty, that's his bright side. But he also has a dark side. I think that he's among the inventors of nativist populist politics globally, which means he constantly has to sell a narrative of uh, victimization to his base. That included embracing the cause of rededicating the Hagia Sophia. James Ryan specializes in Turkish history at New York University. We spoke recently in Manhattan. Help us understand why President Erdogan would do something like this, because there are no shortage of mosques and prayer space in Istanbul. Why now is also a very important question. Turkey has been in a serious uh, economic decline over the last uh, four or five years. In a lot of ways, achieving this now is trying to pick a culture war battle to distract from serious problems that are affecting Turks on an everyday basis. A 2018 recession battered the Turkish economy. The pandemic made it worse. One key to recovery is the return of tourism. The Hagia Sophia is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, visited by 3.7 million people last year, who came to see both the Ottomans' Islamic calligraphy and the even older Christian mosaics commissioned by the Byzantine Emperor. That artwork is critically important to the descendants of what once was a vibrant Greek Orthodox community. For the time being, there may not be much reason for conflict. What it means for everyday non-Muslims is actually not all that much, since you know the the Hagia Sophia will only really be closed to visitors during prayer times. And in fact, the admissions fee, which was 100 Turkish lira, is now zero. Although Islamic worship forbids the use of iconography, the artifacts created by the Byzantines will remain in the Hagia Sophia. The country's Bureau of Religious Affairs says the building will simply either cover or dim the lights around the artwork during worship, raising the question, what does the rededication really achieve and for how long? Ayasofya'nın biz e, cami olduğunu duyduğumuz anda pandemiyi de unuttuk, hastalığı da unuttuk. Her şey bizi unutturduğu için Cumhurbaşkanımıza çok teşekkür ederim. The bump on Erdogan's popularity is going to be temporary and small, but the damage to Turkey's brand 
as a country is going to be quite profound and permanent. Unless he delivers economic growth, nothing is going to restore Erdogan's popularity. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.